Hi, this is Dino, and I want to show you some of the command line tools that I use to administer Apigee in my day-to-day -day work, and also the library that those tools depend on. So I use Node.js quite a bit for uh, automating the administrative tasks that I might want to perform on Apigee. And uh, there is a library, Apigee Edge JS, that helps me do that. Uh, this is available on GitHub. Uh, you can find the repo right there. Uh, and uh, it's licensed under the Apache uh, license. Uh, so you can use this in your work as well. And what it allows you to do, it basically just gives you a wrapper, a Node.js wrapper, uh, around the various entities that are under management in Apigee. Things like environments, proxies, caches, KVMs, resource files, shared flows, flow hooks, products, developers, key stores, and so on. So the kinds of things that you might want to do are gets, puts, deletes, lists, queries, all that sort of thing. Uh, and this uh, wrapper library uh, attempts to allow you to do that in Node.js scripts. Lots of examples in the readme. And also, in the repo, there are fully working example scripts. So not just uh, um, pseudocode, but working uh, example code that you can actually use. And they do some interesting things. So uh, let's see what this looks like. I'm going to clone this. First of all, just copy the, the repo. And then I'll go git clone, paste that in. This will take just a few moments. CD into that, and you see I've got all the code. Uh, the actual library is uh, in uh, the lib directory. The examples uh, are things that I use all the time. Now, they do depend on uh, the NPM package manager. There are a bunch of um, uh, dependencies, uh, which you can see here. So we're going to need to install uh, the dependencies in order to be able to run these things. And then uh, let me show you some of the things you can do. So we'll start with something like this. So importing and then maybe deploying an API proxy from an exploded directory is one of the most common things I do. Uh, so if I want to see, uh, if I want to look at an API proxy, this is the exploded directory. I've got the API proxy uh, directory here, and then under that, I've got list of proxies, and there's an endpoint. We got a bunch of rules in there. Um, I've also got the policies directory and a bunch of policies in there. Uh, and this is a thing that I might want to uh, deploy. Uh, so how do I do that? It's an exploded directory containing all those files now. Well, um, easy way to do that, to import it anyway, is uh, to use this import and deploy uh, script. So that's what the command looks like. I specify the organization name uh, and the source for where to find the exploded API proxy directory. Now this other um, option, dash n, says to use the .NET RC file on my machine in order to get credentials. Um, and so it's going to do that automatically, and I won't even have to type in any of my credentials in order to get this to work. So we'll see that run. And uh, really quick, you know, in under a second, I this script zipped up the existing directory and then imported it into my organization uh, where it is now available. If I want to deploy it as well, I can specify the environment to which I'd like to deploy with the dash E option, and we'll see that happen too, again. So it'll, we'll see that happen also. So it's, um, it's importing, which again is pretty quick, and then it deploys, which is, which takes a few more seconds. And now that API proxy is deployed in the environment. So really nice being able to do that in an automated fashion. This allows me to edit offline in a text editor, uh, and then deploy uh, very quickly, uh, very rapidly. So that's one thing I can do. Uh, another thing I might want to do is look for the latest revision of uh, an API proxy or a set of API proxies in my organization. Um, a lot of uh, administrative tasks might rely on looking for the latest revision. And you can see this one just queries all the, the API proxies um, and gives me the latest revision of, of uh, each one of those. 
what I've done here is it, it the option is a, is a regular expression. So it's looking for API proxies that specifically match that, that start with JWT. But uh, maybe I don't want to do that. So I can, I can ask it to just look at all the API proxies. And I've got lots of them. So this will run for probably quite a bit longer. Uh, but it'll still give me the list of the uh, each API proxy and the latest revision for that thing. So really nice capability. Um, you can see it still runs pretty quickly, and I've got lots and lots of them uh, uh, in my organization. So that's um, that's a nice tool as well. Uh, I can also do things like uh, create a key store. Um, and this uh, I won't run, but uh, this is a thing that you might want to do pretty commonly. So you get to specify the, the environment, the name of the key store, um, a file containing your cert, uh, an alias for the key, a path to the key file in PEM format if you're going to be using uh, a key store and not a trust store. So lots of uh, helpers here that allow you to do um, administering of uh, key stores. Um, another interesting thing I'll show you is looking for API proxies that include uh, specific kinds of policies. So one example might be, I want to look for all the proxies that use Java policies. Why I might want to do that? Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, just just as kind of an administrative task that I might want to perform. And in this case, I've added the dash V option, which is for verbose output. And you saw a whole lot of output. These are all the administrative API uh, requests that are being sent by the script into Apigee. And the result is um, the list of API proxies, the revisions, and the policies in those revisions uh, that you that are Java callout policies. So that's what that script does. Uh, you can, of course, do similar finds for um, key value map policies or cache policies or whatever it is that you'd like to um, to poll. You can look in proxies and you can look in shared flows. Um, lots of capability within the library to support those sorts of things. So those are just some of the examples um, that I've uh, that I have available to show you. There are lots of others. Uh, working examples um, that that you can use right now. For example, finding uh, uh, the API product that a proxy might be contained within, finding an API key, loading a PEM file into the KVM, um, undeploying proxies and maybe deleting, um, finding virtual hosts uh, in deployed proxies, finding a proxy for a particular base path. That's sometimes a thing that you might want to do. So lots of utilities in here, and you can, of course, write your own uh, pretty simple uh, model. We can look at the, um, the import and deploy script, for example. Uh, you'll see what that looks like. Basically, we, um, we connect uh, into Apigee Edge uh, and then import um, by name and, um, and optionally deploy so, uh, to one or more environments. So really nice um, kind of capability in this uh, JavaScript uh, library. Uh, I use this all the time. You may find that it helps you in your job too. That's all I got for today. Uh, take care. See you next time.